Welcome and thanks for joining us. My guest today is Joe Odor, the Global Portfolio Marketing Manager at Codec Laris. Joe, thanks for joining me. Thank you for having me. And there's plenty to be talking about here in terms of Federal Agencies Digital Guidelines Initiative or, or FAGI, but I think a good place to get the conversation started here would just be better understanding the benefits that agencies get from more broadly, records management and digitalization. How can agencies benefit from making these two things a priority? And how does digitalization of records help support agencies' overall missions? So very good question, Jory. Um, so in terms of digitization, um, there's a lot of just key benefits in general, um, and not just for, for government customers, but um, you know, digitization really removes the dependency on paper in general. Um, you know, Older processes require the storage of paper and trying to retain paper is a challenge. One, it requires space. Two, at the same time, if you need to retrieve data, it's very inefficient to retrieve data when it's in paper form. Um, most documents will end up in a filing cabinet, then somebody has to walk up to a filing cabinet and try and search the document. Uh, now in hopes, you know, organization of documents are kept and there's no human error, but let's be realistic. We're only human and we will make errors. So if you misplace a document and that document becomes very important, let's say for a legal matter, uh, for discovery purposes, you can't find it, trying to recreate it uh, could be a challenge. Uh, trying to identify that one specifically can have legal repercussions and compliance issues with that. Uh, so it's really important to digitize, make information accessible, uh, making it intelligent information. So not only is it searchable, but there's information that can be extracted from it that can be used for other systems. Um, you know, let's say it's invoices, let's say it's contracts. Uh, you know, if you're managing that stuff electronically, you can easily gather that data with keyword searches or within a, a system that's monitoring that is, you know, specifically. Uh, very important when you look at legal matters or, you know, government cases where, uh, you know, you've got trials and, and stuff like that. So, you know, taking consideration when you don't have stuff that's easily accessible, um, that becomes a challenge. Now, if you need to also transmit that information to somebody and you don't have it already digitized, one, you may have to be forced to digitize, but at the same time, if not, you're mailing stuff, right? And now you have an additional cost of putting it in an envelope or in a box and sending it via courier or using, you know, Federal, Federal Express or UPS. Um, so, you know, and all that takes time. Even at best case, you're looking at overnight unless it's a local courier delivery, but once again, it's not real time. When you have it digitized and accessible in a system, you can have information at your fingertips in a matter of seconds, as opposed to a matter of minutes, hours, days, even weeks. Okay, great. Well, that's a pretty broad overview of the benefits here. Understandably, this is not just a nice to have, this is a need to have for some agencies. And we're seeing some, I believe, top-down attention on this from an administration-wide perspective. What are agencies obligated to do in terms of keeping records in an electronic or digital format? Um, any updates there? So um, one of the federal mandates right now is M1921, which requires um, not only uh, paper documents to be digitized or submitted in digital format effective January 1st of 2023 to the National Archives for Permanent Archiving. Uh, you know, there's some image quality requirements uh, as part of that mandate called FAGI, uh, which is the Federal Agency's Digital Guidelines Initiative. Now this initiative was actually created um, to help create a standardized um, image protocol for documents being scanned and stored or archived specifically. And while FAGI has been around for some time, the Library of Congress or the uh, Office of Management and Budget had created this mandate to adopt that particular guideline. Now, each agency has different guidelines for how they're managing or accessing information. For the purpose of the Library of Congress, this is only for permanent archiving. So there is not a huge um, need for quick accessibility uh, because part of that guideline requires documents to be uncompressed and then they're stored in their natural state, uh, which is what it's designed to do, um, where it's keeping you know, uh, electronic versions of paper in its original state without doing any kind of real image quality enhancement, which is something that you would typically get with a scanner 
when you're looking at other document management rules. Now, individual agencies can look at it as how fast does information need to be accessed? Who needs to access that? So there's the scanning portion, there's the image processing or the cleanup portion, which you know, delivers crisp, clean images, uh, clear text, data can be extracted very easily in that. And at that point, that information can be input into a document management system or a CRM or some other ERP. And at which that point, that information is now digitized. Information from that digitized document can be extracted and used in other sources. So uh, it could be for contract management, it could be for case management and legal applications. Um, it could be applications for driver's licenses, um, permits, uh, you know, zoning uh, documents. And at that point, a lot of that information has to be made publicly available. So if you're not digitizing those documents, somebody has to physically go to an agency, request those documents. Then the agency typically charges a fee to, you know, copy them and then issue them to you. By making it digitized, you can actually make that information available online and somebody can access that within minutes as opposed to hours if they have to go visit an agency to acquire that information. And at the same time, they could still associate a cost online to you know, pay for the uh, documents that they're receiving. There's other documents that do need to be maintained public. Some of it could be environmental information. You know, there's a wide range of information and it really all depends on how it needs to be used, but it's all about accessibility. And it's also about having retention policies around that information. There may be the case where information only needs to be stored for a certain period of time, which could be, you know, typically about seven years. Some could be longer. Uh, in the case of the, you know, National Archives, that's permanent. That means it'll never disappear. Once it, once it gets received by the Library of Congress, um, the National Archives Administration, uh, you will notice that nothing ever disappears, right? And, it, you know, and, and not that I need to tell anybody what the National Archives does, but the best way to describe what they do is they hold the Declaration of Independence. Um, so you can tell that there's nothing that leaves that place. And if something needs to be accessed, at that point, they were going to receive a digital image of the original file they uh, scanned in that format. And at that point, they will need to find a way to post process that into any other system um, for accessibility or optical character recognition. Okay, great. So it seems like it's Obviously, your mileage will vary depending on where you are in the federal government, what agency you work for. But generally speaking, FAGI seems to be a, a collection of best practices, it seems, in terms of the digitalization and record keeping of these, uh, these records. Yeah, for, for, for the purposes of permanent archiving, definitely. Um, you know, it's all about keeping documents in their true original state. Um, you know, a lot of times in legal situations, uh, you know, or within government, there may be stamps, special watermarks, little tidbits of information. Most scanners try and filter that information out or look at it as a artifact that it tries to remove because it doesn't really um, flow well with the pure image quality of having really readable text. Uh, but when it comes to that permanent archiving, that information might be the key to that document. Um, so you don't want to lose that in terms of permanent archive. Now, if you're using the extracted information from there for other purposes, you definitely want to make sure you have, you know, strong image guidelines along that line. Um, and, and FAGI has a scaled uh, system. Part of it is document type, whether it's a photo, whether it's a text-based document, um, different standards for different purposes. Um, you know, there's a FAGI one-star and it scales up to a FAGI four-star. Four-star being the most diligent in terms of image quality and reproduction to true original. Um, and of course, there's a FAGI two and a three star, which may be suitable for everyday documents that are scanned and stored. Um, but really the whole standardization is to really keep everybody on a very consistent scale in terms of how documents are scanned and retained. And from that point, you can do additional functions to those documents, even if that means you're gonna clean up some gray background. Um, you know, a lot of, uh, a lot of forms may have multi-part. There's a, you know, a pink, a yellow, and a white sheet. The white sheet may be retained. The yellow sheet might go somewhere else. And if you were, let's say, scanning that yellow sheet as the copy, they want you to keep that yellow copy true to its original form. And when you have those documents, you can't remove the background. You actually have to keep the yellow background with it. And that's what FAGI really, really kind of emphasizes is 
maintaining that true original document. It's as close to paper as you could possibly get digitally. Okay, great. Well, um, let's maybe dive a little more deeply into one aspect of the process that we've been describing a little bit already, which is the the image capture, the scanning portion of things, at least when it comes to still images. Um, walk me through more of how the process works there. And, you know, to tie it back to Faji, what kind of image quality standards are we looking at for agencies to comply when it comes to getting that, that still image capture of the document that they're looking to digitize? Sure. So <clears throat> as I kind of mentioned, you know, there's different levels for the Faji specification itself. Uh, when it comes it, when it comes to the National Archives Administration mandate uh, M1921, they're looking at a FAGI three star level um, for permanent archiving of paper based documents or text based paper documents. So um, it doesn't have a pure photogenic um, reproduction like you would a photo, uh, but it's really designed to make sure that the text is readable, the backgrounds in its original state. Um, so that's where they're kind of looking at where to keep that. Now, there are some uh, different areas of that specification uh, that they are a little bit more or less lenient on, um, only because of the different technologies. Um, prior to, you know, let's say a year ago, um, creating fudgy based images was a very inefficient process. It was generally done with a flatbed with a very high end, what they call CCD. Um, and that's just a, a short acronym for basically the digital camera that captures the image. Now, if you have hundreds of pages to scan, it's very inefficient for somebody to scan one page at a time off of a flatbed. Um, so what we're looking at is more sheet fed devices. And because FAGI is very vigilant in how it's um, controlling image quality, it also affects productivity of a traditional document scanner. Uh, so what would normally be fed at 100 pages per minute could actually be reduced down to 80 pages per minute because there are so many different things that need to be done on the hardware side to support that. Uh, so you know it's key for efficiency to use a sheet fed scanner that can scan in volumes, but also optimizing the image quality within the device to stay within those specifications. My guest today is Joe Odor, the Global Portfolio Marketing Manager at Kodak Alaris. I'm your moderator, Jory Heckman, on the special Bolton Review, Pathway to Faji Compliance, sponsored by Kodak Alaris on Federal News Network.